Welcome everyone. My name is Kevin Webb. I work for Minter Graphics as a Valor Technical Marketing Engineer. And I want to give you a quick demo on DFM analysis for a rigid flex design utilizing Valor NPI version 9.7. But before I jump into the demo, I want to give you a quick overview of some of the differences between the flex and the rigid flex modules versus the standard Valor NPI tools. This module runs on top of the standard Valor MPI tools that you're probably accustomed to using today. So you will still have all the standard Valor MPI tools and checks available, but with this added module comes a set of DFM checks specific to flex and to rigid flex types of designs. With this module, we now have flex analysis for those flex only type designs. We also have rigid flex analysis for those designs that are part flex and part rigid. And we have what's called the inclusion analysis, which is a generic analysis for evaluating the relationships of features between layers. These types of checks are based on layers of the following types. We have the bend area layers where we validate any kind of route direction changes, as well as routing that's not perpendicular to the bend area. We look at acute angles, clearances to cover lay, stiffeners, plated through holes, via drills, as well as components. We also have the air gap layer where we validate proximity to plated through hole vias and stiffeners. We have what we call the layer bonding layer, which is also known as adhesive layers, where we look at the proximity of the board edge and material widths. We have a stiffener layer where we're validating material widths, bend areas, air gaps, and cover lays. We also analyze the solder mask cover lay and cover coat layers and its relationship to copper and proximity to board edges, as well as silver mask, which is also known as EMI, where we look at relationships to copper, proximity to board edge, play through holes and vias. We also have the rigid area itself, where we run a number of different types of checks in the rigid area, as well as a number of different types of checks in the flex area. The other thing I want to highlight is with this latest release of ODB++ 8.1, we now support zones. This is where you might define your zones within your expedition design and then pass that zone information over to Valor NPI. These zones are where the material used to construct the product model is consistent through the stack up. And very important to note is by utilizing the zones, the rigid flex analysis can now properly analyze the design based on the zone type, hence applying the right type of checks to the correct zone and in turn giving us a more accurate analysis. And while zones is part of the latest ODB++ product structure, currently only Expedition has the ability to drive the zone information into ODB++ structure to drive Valor NPI. In this particular slide, I'm showing you an example of a stack up from Expedition. But I wanted to quickly point out that, that the expedition zones are basically defined by stack up by outline. By taking this approach, it allows the outline changes during the design without the stack up being impacted or other outlines. This helps when you have these tricky overlaps and various stack up regions. With this approach, each outline still has its own stack up. In this illustration, we have a rigid flex design that has five flex cables. These are our five flex cables, as well as five rigid areas within this particular design. So, okay, now that we've uh, finished with the overview, let's go ahead and jump right on into the demo. The job that I'm going to work on today uh, for this particular demo was done in Expedition. I'm going to show you how we would launch this uh, from Expedition and do our analysis and then show some of the results back in Expedition. But uh, due to time limitations, I have went ahead and generated the ODB++ file as well as ran some analysis on it. So we don't have to wait on that compute time and so forth. So I'll just talk to those steps. So typically you would go in here and you'd launch your ODB++, which would go off and create your ODB++ file. Then you could run some analysis on it directly from this option, but we're not going to do that as I've already ran the analysis for this particular job. So I'm going to go ahead and launch Valor uh, directly from uh, within Expedition. And I'm going to go ahead and select my Flex DFM Design Center that I've created. And now, as you can see, I've brought up this design in the workstation. 
before I go further here, I'm going to go ahead though and go back over to Valor and set up my synchronization. So now for the time being, I'm just going to go ahead move this out of the way because I want to talk about a few things first. I'm just going to use the graphics workstation to kind of display the different layers. But the first thing I want to do is actually go into the layer matrix so we can kind of work our way through this layer stack up so you can see what actually came over from the expedition design. Because as I mentioned in the presentation, one of the key things to run in this analysis is based off of the layer stack up and how the layers are defined uh, as they come over from expedition or whether they're just part of a rigid board or they're part of a flex. So we'll kind of start here at the top and we'll look at the solder paste layer. You'll see that it's a board type solder paste positive layer, which is just like any other standard uh, layer that you would see in your rigid designs today. We'll go ahead and jump down to the solder mask top. You'll see it's defined just as a regular solder mask as well. If we go turn that layer on so we can see it, you'll see that the solder mask layer is only associated with the um, rigid area. And as we move on down, let's say signal one, we'll go ahead and turn signal one on. You'll see signal one is part of the rigid area as well. And you can see it's defined as a, as a board signal positive. So it's just your standard configuration as far as your layer assignments and such. But you see, as we move on down, first several layers here are just your standard type of a rigid configuration. But when I drop down to cover lay, you can see now that I have a subtype assignment of cover lay. So this would be our first layer within the stack up that is really flex related. And as you can see, it's coded as a solder mask layer, but it is a, a subtype of, of cover lay. Along with that, it references the flex five layer, which is right below it. If we turn on the, uh, the flex five layer, we'll see that it is a power and ground type positive, and it has a subtype of power ground flex. And let's go ahead and turn that on so you can see that this is our first layer within the stack up that there's actual circuitry in the flex area. But as you can also see, it also extends on into the layer five of the, of the rigid area. Uh, the next layer here we'll look at is the stiffener. And you can see that it's a type mask along with a subtype of stiffener. As you can see, there's a number of options there to choose from. But if we go ahead and take a look at the stiffener layer, you'll see that we have a stiffener right here, which is associated with this component that we have on the back side of the board. We drop on down to layer six or flex six. We'll see that it's also a power ground flex of a power and ground type. And if I turn that layer on, you'll see that it's the bottom layer of the flex circuit. And if we go ahead and zoom in here, you see here's where this component is sitting. Uh, one other thing I'll show you as I'm working here, I'm gonna go ahead and move this up and go ahead and bring my expedition over. So you can kind of see how the relationship between my Valor and my Expedition is working. So as I zoom in, as I just did a second ago and zoom in, you'll see it also automatically zooms into that location within my Expedition without doing anything. So this is a very useful approach to working through your violations and such that you find within Valor. You can easily see those issues uh, directly in your Expedition and of course, fix them in Expedition to automatically update your data source. So let's go ahead and continue down our uh, layer stack up window. We'll look at the cover bottom. You see it's, it's set up as a cover lay with a flex six. And then when we jump down to signal seven, you'll see that signal seven is your rigid area of your design. And of course, there's no more layers associated with this flex at this point. And let's go ahead and move on down to the bend layer. And we'll go ahead and display that over on your screen. So you can see what that looks like. And here's the bend area. Let's turn signal seven off. And if we look at the configuration for that, you'll see that it is a mass type as well with a subtype of bend area. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. You get the point there. We'll come back to that. And now let's go ahead and drop down to the next one, let's say the flex area. And you can see that we've defined the flex area here on my design. And as you can see from the 
configuration settings that the uh, the type is mask again and the subtype is flex area and for the rigid area we've defined that as here's our mask and here's our rigid area and we can see what that looks like and if I select my interface this happens to be where the rigid and the flex interface uh, into each other so that's what would be called your interface layer the rest of these layers here are, of course, your drills and your routes. And then we also have these zone layers here, which I'm going to talk to just a second. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, get it out of the way. Go ahead and expand that. There's a couple ways to, to work with these zones and to view them. One of them is through the options graphical control. And there is an option here to say layer zoom display. So if I turn this on to yes, and let's go ahead and pop up here and look at a, a layer, for instance, signal three. You'll see here that by putting on this display, that it changes what the display looks like and basically shows me where the zone is. Okay, I can also look at that in an outline form, which is kind of hard to tell on the screen, but you can do that as well. If we come down here and look at flex five, maybe it's, it makes a little more sense. And if we turn on the display zones, you'll see it makes the rigid area solid and it hatches wherever the flex area is. So that's one way to quickly jump back and forth to look at where your, your zones are defined. But another process that you can perform on this is under actions, convert zones to layers. And by doing that, it takes all of your layers and creates another layer of that type where it defines what your zone is. So if I look at my signal one zone, this is the zone that's set up for my signal one. Same way with my signal two, et cetera. If I jump down to flex zone, you'll see that the, this particular zone is, is defined in this fashion. And if I drop down, say solder mask, you'll see solder mask zone is just for my rigid area. So that's another nice way to be able to uh, display your different zones within Valor if you want to be able to reference that information. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to jump over and use the MRA tool, also known as the Manufacturing Risk Analysis tool. And from here, I'm going to kind of go through some of the, the analysis that I already performed on this design. But before I do that, let me go ahead and show you what checks I did run. So underneath the checklist editor, we'll go underneath our flex design. And as you can see, I've got three different types of checks that I performed. I, I did an assembly check, fabrication check, which would be your standard checks that you perform on your rigid designs today. But in addition to that, I ran the rigid flex check. And this is the one we're gonna focus on mainly today. And as you can see, it's got a number of different types of checks that are associated with flex and rigid flex types of designs. We're looking at bend area type checks, bonding checks, you know, things associated with cover lays, as well as plated through holes to bend areas, those types of checks that are being performed. You can see we have silver checks, and as well as checks associated with the stiffeners and, and that type of thing. So I think we have a little over 85 different checks that are being performed at this level for the rigid flex type designs. So now let's go ahead and start going through some of the results. Now, first, select the etch tab so we'll look at things associated with etch i'm going to go ahead and bring over my expedition so you can kind of see what's going on here at the same time go ahead and jump to my first issue which is the trace width change in the interface area and if i look at the first instance of that let's go ahead and zoom in let's go ahead and clear this select area so you can kind of see it a little bit easier but here you can see that we have a thicker trace that is being narrowed down to a smaller trace. So we're having a, a width change within the interface area. So that's why it is showed that as a violation. I have it set up to report any kind of a width change that takes place in this interface area. So if I back out a little bit, you'll see that there's actually four instances of that particular problem. We could toggle through each one of them if we wanted. Um, the uh, next check that we'll look at is the rigid area outer layer copper close to interface. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And here you can see that I've got copper that's coming into this interface area. 
And the way I've set this up is I'm looking for anything uh, that is less than 10 mil clearance that is going to flag it. And as you can see, I have an 8.66. The reason I'm getting an 8.66 is because if I turn on the, the, these two layers, you will see that where these two layers meet is right here. So that's really the interface area that's uh, being defined, and we're only 8.6 mils away from that. So that's why that is uh, being flagged. And we have this situation on a couple outer layers, and the same situation here on the inner layers. There's actually three places within inner layers that violate this uh, interface area. And again, as you can see here, I've got my assembly types of checks and my fabrication checks if I wanted to go and look at some of that. Okay, let's go ahead and move into the next tab. I think you get the idea here of how the Expedition and the Valor NPI work together while you change your displays and such within Valor. It automatically changes the location within the design in Expedition and turns on those layers. So. Let's go ahead and just expand this out so we can see uh, the whole thing a little bit better as we move forward. So the next tab I'm going to do is the solder tab. The first issue I want to look at is a clearance too close to the profile. So you can see here I've got coverlay pad that's too close to the profile. I'm looking for a 7 mil. I only had a 6.28. If I look at my coverlay to pad, I've got a number of violations associated with that. I actually have six of those all together. And let's go ahead and jump to, we are looking at a cover lay to line distance where I'm looking for a four mils and we only have 3.93. Also, I should note here, we could also turn on the category description, which will help explain what each of these violations are and give a graphical representation of a, of a sample violation. So now let's go ahead and uh, look at the first instance of, of this particular check where we're looking at coverlay to coverlay. There happens to be four of these bigger coverlay openings on this particular chip, and they're running just a little too close based off of what we are looking for. We wanted a 3.6 mils, and we're only getting a 3.53 mil. And lastly, for the solder tab area, will be the uh, cover lay clearances close to a stiffener. As you can see, this particular device has 34 pins on it, and all the pins are too close to the stiffener. So we're looking for at least a 10 mil clearance, and we only had a 1.96. We jump over to mechanical. There's, there's no flex analysis uh, errors that it found in this area, nor will it have found anything in the component area. Uh, so we'll jump on over to quality. quality we're going to look at some inclusion checks that I've performed on this design. Take a look at the first one. And what it's stating here is that we have a small exposed copper that is close to the interface area. If I zoom in here a little closer and, and say that I turn on my solder mask layer, you'll see that there's a little bit of exposed copper here on the top of the board, which was one of the violations, as well as we have one on the bottom of the board. So that's... Uh, where we found uh, this particular problem utilizing the inclusion option. And let's go ahead and move into the process setup. We'll look at the first results found for this category, which was the non-SMD related uh, solder mess cover lay clearances close to an interface axis. Take a look at the first one. We have, instead of being copper that's close to that interface area, we now have a cover lay or solder mask uh, information that's too close to that area. In this case, it found a couple instances of that particular problem. No change in that list for flex and rigid flex designs any different than your standard rigid design, so no changes there. So that wraps up my demo for today in regards to how to run a flex or a rigid flex design through the analysis process of Valor NPI. I thank you for your time, and I hope you found it interesting.